Showtime. Let's go. Curling now enters the Sports Weekend Spotlight. Welcome inside the Granite Curling Club, Colleen. We're having absolutely no fun in Saskatoon. What form he has. Can you believe that? I mean, no wonder why the rumors about us playing mixed doubles are so big. Well, have I told you about what happened in this very club? No, I haven't heard. I won two high school city championships mm -hmm. right here, just two sheets over. It's conjuring up all the emotions Memories. here tonight. I have searched the entire Granite Curling Club. I'm still looking for the banner. With Devin There's Peru's no proof, but there. trust me on this In one. The light. It's so good to be live here. And we're here at the Granite because, of course, the Granite Odyssey. And also, in addition to that little thing called the Olympic Trials. It's underway, and it's dramatic just the way we like it. And, of course, the women were just off the ice, but earlier today, Colleen, the men were on the ice. Yeah. We're starting to get some separation, aren't Ooh, we? You know, I was surprised at some of the separation that happened so early. Right. Um, that was one of the noticeable things, that there's sort of a, a split in the uh, old whiteboards. Should you have whiteboards. <laughs> of course Colleen has whiteboards. She wasn't going to forget them. I wasn't going to forget We're on the road, them. but we're feeling no. like we're right back in her home in Nova Scotia. Well, Take a look at this. To you. Let's now update we'll the all standings. Remember. It's so Colleen, glary, isn't Colleen, it? Colleen, you've updated, uh, you've stepped up your game with the percentages I put percentages here. in there. Because you know the noticeable thing on the men's side? There's not a huge separation in the percentages. Right. Everybody's sort of, you know, right. a shot or two away. But you've got Gushu at 5-0, and o, Jacobs. Cooey and McEwen at the one losses. Right. Everybody else still fighting. I think the twos and threes are still alive. Ditto on the women's side right. with Fleury on top, Jones, McCarvel, and Einerson. And Scheidegger. I know. Uh, we're going to get to the women. What yeah. stands out to me on that, yes. on those updated standings, like, Colleen, you. on your <laughs> very a articulate uh he was correcting here. my spelling uh you saw brad jacobs at 92 percent mm -hmm. uh four and one i think he's probably feeling really good about where he is five games in and we're going to find out how good he's, he's got feeling. a night off and i know he wants to get to dinner so let's bring him in let's uh, let's Mr. bring him in Jacob. right now and brad welcome to the show we were wondering how you're feeling four and one after five games how are you feeling yeah i'm feeling great you guys can see me and hear me all right we got you. Uh, we got you. Where are you right now, Brad? Okay, good. Yeah, no, I'm at the arena. I'm actually up in the nosebleeds. This place is huge. And uh, we just finished our, our second uh, rapid COVID test. So fingers crossed. Um, we don't get a phone call and everything's good. But everybody's been uh, really good with the protocols and everything. But um, yeah, just had a, just coming off a fresh hour and a half nap. Uh, seeing that we have the night off, we were able to rest up a little bit. But Feeling really good at four and one. Uh, we've, you know, we've, we've had a great start to this event so far, uh, but lots of work ahead of us. Has your buy tonight fallen at just the right time? Yeah, uh, one of the uh, local reporters in Sault Ste. Marie asked me that question, and I never really thought about it. I never looked at, I never looked at the schedule that far ahead to see where that buy was. But I would say that it, it couldn't have been placed any better. Um, I think at this point, out you know, being past the midway point, five games in, and we're right in the thick of things, um, this couldn't have come at a better time for all of us. So uh, we're really looking forward to, just like you said, Colleen, going out and, and having a nice dinner tonight, watching some curling on TV, uh, sleeping in tomorrow, and heading into the last three games. Brad, uh, you mentioned uh, the COVID tests, curling still in a pandemic. It is the Olympic trials. Colleen and I have been talking about the fact that this is a different beast entirely. You've won it before. Can you describe to the people watching tonight why this event is so different than all the other bond spiels you play in? Oh, I think it's, um, you know, well, it's clearly the fact that we're all 
uh, fighting for an opportunity to play in, uh, you know, the the Olympics, the pinnacle of sport, and putting that maple leaf on our backs. Um, we've been fortunate enough to to do that once, and we were successful uh, doing so. Um, but it's it's an experience of a lifetime. It's as everyone knows, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. And just just the fact that it is a once in a lifetime opportunity that only comes around every four years. There's that you know tendency to grip the broom a little bit tighter and and just you know give it your all at that little bit extra uh, and play with that sense of urgency. So um, yeah, it's been a great event so far. So many shots have been made and. Uh, you know, like I said, we're past the halfway point now, coming down to the wire, and uh, going to be a really entertaining weekend ahead. What's the magic that Mark Kennedy brings to this team, different than the team you won Olympic gold with by one player? Um, I think uh, I think he brings a little bit of a, a sense of calm to our team and a ton of experience. Uh, when I think of Mark, I, I think of just a, a total professional. A uh, really disciplined human being, um, you know, in his personal life as well as his athletic life, and uh, you know, he's just a lot of fun to be around and, and an all-around, uh, you know, great person. And we're really, you know, fortunate to have him on this team. Uh, not only that, the guy makes a lot of curling shots, and, uh, and I'm sure he's got a bunch more in him this left in him this week. Uh, Brad, I want to ask you for you personally what this journey has been like. Uh, you and I have had the chance to have a lot of conversations at a lot of bond spills over the years, and you seem to have uh, a renewed perspective, I would say, at least from, from my vantage point. Maybe just tell us a little bit about the journey you're on and, and where you feel you're at in life and career and curling. Ooh. Yeah, absolutely. It's a big That's one. A big question, one. Big one. Um, I would say that, uh, you know, right now, I said it earlier this week, I said curling has really brought to all of us everything we've ever hoped for and a lot more to this point. And I think that having that perspective is really important because it takes some pressure off. Uh, and, you know, it's the, it's the truth. It's a fact. It's, I'm at a point now where for me personally, even Ryan and EJ and Mark, we're all in our mid to late 30s, that, that window is closing. Uh, although we all still feel very young and, and we train hard and we try to keep ourselves as young as possible, uh, we know that we're, we're past the halfway point, that's for sure. Uh, so we're really just trying to relish in the experience uh, and enjoy it as much as possible, stay in the moment, because we know that uh, putting, putting too much pressure on ourselves and trying to focus on adding to the resume is going to help us make curling shots. We're really just focused on one shot at a time, bringing our best effort to the ice each and every game and uh, accepting the results uh, as, as they may happen. Yeah, well said. Enjoy your night off. And okay. thank you so much for making time for us. Awesome. Thank Lots you guys. Of luck. Always a pleasure. Great job. Oh, so thank nice. you, Brad. Always yeah. good to talk to you. Uh, that perspective, Colleen. So, so good. I mean, and it's a team that just gets better and better and better. And when they have a little uh, blip, but what's my definition of a blip? Right. When they don't make a Briar playoff, they go back, they retweak. And this is what we're hearing from all of the great players. Yeah. It's about learning from your mistakes right. and, and, and going back to the practice table well, and figuring and, it out. And, and yesterday we had the pleasure of watching the Battle of the Brads and the Battle of the Marks, mm. as you've said. Yeah. And what a battle that was. It lived up to the billing, didn't it? it and did. it was outstanding curling. Yeah. Uh, one of the beautiful things about being here at the Granite Curling Club is, of course, the, the World Junior World Junior, Qualifiers. Yeah, to see who's going to go to the World Juniors. That exactly. little event. So talk about a pressure cooker situation. And it was such a, um, I, what's my right word during COVID when so much was canceled? But right. when all the junior playdowns were canceled, I mean, their their shelf life in juniors is a short career. Absolutely. And so when they miss out a year or two, it's quite a big deal. So it's nice that this is happening here at this curling club. Right. Because the reality of all of this is we're probably going to find the next Olympic curlers for Canada right Without here in Saskatoon. Yeah. Because all good advice. things go through Saskatoon. <laughs> uh, listen, we are so thrilled to have in the house with us tonight the team from Newfoundland and Labrador.
Team Young here, and uh, we're going to go to them right now. How exciting is that? Uh, welcome to the show, you guys. It's outstanding to have you. Uh, maybe we can start by you guys introducing yeah. yourself and letting us know how the bond spiel is going so far for yeah. you guys. Go ahead, Nate. Skipper, tell, tell us who's here. All right. Well, uh, like, like uh, Devin said, we're Team Newfoundland Labrador. Um, I'm Nathan Young to Skip. We have Sam Fall at third, Nathan Long second. Ben Stringer at lead and Jerry Adam as our coach. Nice. And uh, we just uh, finished our third game. We're 2-1 and one currently, and uh, we just lost our last game to Team Nova Scotia. But, man, they played uh, super well. I don't think their lead or skip missed a shot they that game. They don't do that. So, uh, Those Nova Scotians, I think you've got to watch them. They're sneaky. They don't even see it coming. Yeah. Absolutely. Listen, what I'm curious, so how's it going otherwise except for the loss? You guys feeling good? Yeah, yeah, we're feeling great. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Nice. Learning it, like, like you said in the last clip, learning every game and taking it forward. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you're listening. He's a smart <laughs> man. This guy doesn't ever listen to me. Okay, um, tell me about the effect of the Brad and Mark and that Olympic gold. I don't know if you guys were born in 2006. I'm trying to do the math. Four, four years old. You were four years old. Three, but anyhow, three. what is the Brad effect for junior curling? Well, you just look at his work ethic for one. I mean, before, before he headed to Saskatoon himself. I mean, they were down to the club, geez, what, it was four, four, five, and six hours a day. Right. So, I mean, you just look at them and think, all right, if we want to do this, this is what it's going to take. Yeah. Right. So it's it's really cool to have that opportunity to watch them and learn from them. Now, now, guys, I've had the opportunity to watch a lot of curling in Newfoundland and Labrador, and I know what it means to the people there. And earlier today, Colleen and I had a chance to speak to Mark and Brad about some of their memories from that Olympic gold. Let's listen to those now, and, and then we'll get you guys to, you. To, to react. Most of the memories that I have from that are off the ice. Uh, the on-ice stuff, I, you know, I remember a couple shots. Um, but I remember some of the off-ice stuff. Like I remember walking through kind of this courtyard as we were going to get our uh, medal in, in this plaza. And we got a call from the prime minister at that time, who was Stephen Harper. And you know, the, that kind of sticks out in my mind. I remember being on the podium and seeing Bob Cole out in, uh, out in the crowd with you know 10,000 people. And he stood, stood out like a sore thumb. And uh, you know, those are the things that I remember. I remember us up in the rooms just being stupid 24, 25 year olds and doing uh, silly stuff. So those are the things that stand out. It's hard to pick one. Obviously winning the gold medal is is number one, but those opening ceremonies, walking in as a United Team Canada, um, so many athletes that I looked up to as I was growing up, you know, you're standing shoulder to shoulder with them, uh, walking in, waving the flag, just, you know, dreamed of it as, as a young kid the chance to you know, go to the Olympics, let alone, you know, stand on the podium. Uh, it doesn't, uh, doesn't get any better. Awesome. Yeah, and you know, you heard Brad say he saw Bob Cole out in the crowd at the medal ceremony. He said, once had someone in Newfoundland and Labrador t tell me what's good for Bob Cole is good for everyone in Newfoundland and Labrador. And I think everybody would agree over there. What are you guys learning here? And, you know, Colleen mentioned when she was when we were setting you guys up that a lot of events were canceled. What have you learned over the last while about your love of curling and how good it is to be back? Yeah, uh, it's, just, it's, it's just great uh, really getting to come out here. Uh, we're learning a lot every every game. We're learning something new, I think. Uh, just doing what the ice can give us, uh, just trying to make as many shots as we can. Nice. And uh, with everything being canceled in the last couple of years, it's great to be out here now. Uh, and we were, we were all just itching to get to get back on the ice with everything canceled, and it's great to be here now. Nice. Do you still play in your provincials to coach the next Canadian junior? Was it so? It's going to be a busy season this year. You're going to need a lot of water. So look. I'm not letting them near you because you're in bubble. You're their bubble over here. They're in their own bubble, absolutely. So we have some CBC swag for the team, and uh, we've got those CBC water bottles. In fact, actually, you guys, the red and white uh, match the uniforms perfectly, don't they? Uh, a little side note, Colleen, is as you toss the water bottles yeah. over. Uh, of course, I got to cover. Nathan, as he skipped Team Canada at the Youth nice. Olympics in Lausanne, and so many people were struck by the poise of this young man, and of course, we saw it again here today, a true pro, the entire team. Good luck to all of you guys. You. Awesome you. to have you. you on the show and in my hometown, so welcome. 
Yeah. All right. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Nice, nice having you. Good luck in your next game. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Now that you've got Nova Scotia out of the way, I'm sure it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. I see the Nova Scotia women are leading in their pool as well. What's in the water, Call it's, in Nova Scotia? Right in the water. But I do think there's an effect. For example, these a lot of the Atlantic provinces teams are inspired by Brad. Mm. Um, some were inspired by me to kind of have this idea. Mm -hmm that, you know what, we've got the ability to practice, to play, see how it's done, and maybe even win. Maybe even win. Okay, listen, uh, we told you we were gonna talk about the, the women's standings, and mm -hmm. I think we should really get into it because I, I would say this is pretty stunning where we're at with the with the standings. Not to be dramatic, no, but Colleen's gonna bring out the, the standings again. again. And because I've never seen Holman at the bottom at one and four and we talked to her and she said they're close yeah they're close but talk about when you're on the wrong side of the inch yeah it's kind of frustrating flurry at a perfect um five and oh five and oh uh she's the world number one team obviously for a reason yep i mean she's uh she's performing here i thought there might be just because she's never won the, the Scotties and mm. she's never won the Olympic trials like Rachel Homan and Jennifer right. Jones have, right. that there might be some nerves here. She hasn't shown. Like she, what she, we're she, seeing from other teams. And it, it, she's unflappable. I mean, I yeah. know curling fans out there would probably agree with this and let us know where you're tuning mm -hmm, in from tonight. Mm -hmm. um, but Tracy Flurry sits in the hack. She was coming into the afternoon draw, curling 94% through the four games. Mm. The next closest, Jennifer Jones at 78%. That's a, That's a huge difference. gap. As we take a look at the standings there, Team Flurry clear, 5-0, and oh, Jones 5-1. Mm -hmm. and one. And then that log jam, Colleen, with teams at three losses. So Rachel Holman isn't mathematically not, out of it because yet. Because you can see it won't take a lot. I mean, one one, one of those three teams, and I haven't quite calculated all the math here. <laughs> I'd really need to be standing up with a whiteboard to do that. The four could still be in it. By the same token, one of those teams might stay at three and right. go straight in. So. Because at this point of the week, you call it moving day. Uh, mm -hmm. We're always looking at the standings. And of course, uh, my timeline is being inundated with tiebreaker talk because there yeah. are tiebreakers here reserved for that Saturday morning. If we need them, we would like sleep. We would like to drink coffee. Right. Well, we're but going to drink coffee we're no matter drink what. Coffee anyway. <laughs> it's going to happen. Um, there could be tiebreakers though. Yeah. So it is interesting to see just sort of how it's gone down in the yeah. women's play that, I mean, when we were talking to Jennifer Jones earlier after her win today and her game against honors, and I'm sure fans are still talking about 10-9, and um what was this what was the score it was six nothing after three right. ends for anderson yeah. then it was eight two uh, well yeah and anderson won the game at the end but it was a little bit like you take it you take no, it you, you have take it. it right there right. were a couple of misses and it made for the most entertaining game because messy. it was messy in a good way <laughs> there was no predictability to it because everything that you thought was going to happen, oh, she just has right. a little hit. Right. Oh, she just has to make that draw. Uh, if Jennifer makes her last draw, right? It's, yeah, it anyhow. speaks to the pressure of this, and we cer and you certainly felt it. I felt it uh, inside the arena today. I, I felt a different level of intensity. Yeah. From the from the skips, especially today. And, and people do talk about the fact that the the draw weight can be a bit patchy mm. sometimes, so depending on when you're at, and depending on the the time but, the, but that that is not that unusual but on guess arena what? ice both teams play on it oh he's so wise <laughs> so true uh, it's time for in the house it is time for in the house and it's probably our favorite segment on the show because this has always been about the fans it's mm -hmm. because of you that we're here doing this show guiding you through the olympic trials and this is a an incredible powerful story mm -hmm. and interview we're about to do Colin. and we had heard it in the mirror i heard it back in Nova Scotia, what was going on at the Fredericton Curling Club, this trying to get into the Guinness Book of World Records. And I thought, how long are they going to curl? Well, how long did they curl for? We're, let's go to our guest. Absolutely. It's a long. It's, it's a long time. <laughs> We're going to invite to the show, into that curling show, Stephen Burns. Stephen, it's wonderful to see you. Thank you so much for being on that curling show with Colleen and I. How many hours was it? <laughs> yeah. And congratulations, because it sounds like you set a new Guinness record. 
We curled for a hundred. Thank you for having me on. Uh, we curled for 120 hours. Now we're not official yet. We still have to get confirmed by Guinness, <laughs> but uh, that could take a couple of weeks. But uh, it looks very promising. We did, like I said, 100, uh, just over 120 hours. Amazing. That's what was curling. behind it? Tell us the story of how this evolved. Well, as uh, I'm only been curling for about a year and a half. And uh, last year we were sitting at the curling club after a game and, and there was a world record that was set. Uh, I don't think it was official, but it was set from the Capital Winter Club in 1982. And we thought, what a great idea to bring that back to the club. And uh, we also thought if we're going to do this, we might as well do it for a great cause. So we, uh, we looked at kind of some of the challenges that are in a lot of communities today and one of them being youth mental health. So we, uh, set out to do 120 hours and raise $120,000. And, uh, as of today, we're at around 210. So people obviously, uh, thought it was a great idea. Stephen, uh, Colleen and I often on this show talk about vulnerability, um, and I know how personal this has been to you. I, I don't know if you're and how much you're willing to share, um, but this is deeply personal, like I said, and, and I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit about your journey uh, with your family. Sure. Uh, some people would know this from, from my name, but uh, unfortunately, my wife was uh, one of the police officers that was killed uh, in the line of duty in 2018. And, uh, I have three young boys and, uh, I see this on a daily basis with, uh, mental health and, uh, things that they've gone through that I've gone through, um, since that's all happened. And, uh, that's where it really resonated for me and, and the people that, uh, I did it with the other 10 people, the other nine people, they all have kids and they all, um, know what it, the struggles that, you know, they see on a daily basis. It's not, not the same as when I grew up, you know, you've got social media now you have COVID. There's so many things that these kids are going through. And we just thought if we could uh, do something to make a difference that, uh, you know, it, maybe it, we could make an impact. And I think, think we've done that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Colleen, I know you and I were talking about this, uh, coming here to the rink and knowing that we were going to be talking to Stephen and we were just blown away at, at what Stephen's done, what mm -hmm. the community has done. Mm. I'm wondering, Stephen, uh, it sounds like you're looking for more donations. How can people help? How can people get involved? Sure. Uh, the big thing is that when we finished on Saturday at around 9 a.m. in the morning, we had uh, a donor come to us, uh, J the J.T. Clark Family Foundation is a local uh, philanthropist philanthropist and they wanted to donate $50,000, but they gave us a challenge. They said they would give us that $50,000 if we would hit 300,000 in, in donations. So that's where we're at right now. My, uh, my wife, my late wife's fund, there's a, it's called the Sarah Burns forever fund also will match that $50,000. So if we can get to $300,000, then we will actually raise $400,000 for youth mental health. And, uh, we're really, uh, you know, it's a big task. We've got a lot of work to do, but we've got some events coming up, but there's an event next weekend where we're going to do a marathon curling event for the public, basically get people to see what it was like for us to do it for the 120 hours, but on a mini version. And uh, if anybody wants to, uh, to donate, they can go to cwccares.ca. Uh, all the information is on there. We'd love to have some teams from out of province come and, and take part in that. So I know there's lots of curling fans, obviously, around the Atlantic provinces and, and elsewhere. And uh, we're just uh, we're thrilled to see the, the support that we've seen. You know, all of the, the 10 members of the team are, are grateful to see the support. I, I seem to be the one that always does the talking, but there's there's nine other people that have done a fantastic job in, in uh, pulling this together. Wow. What a difference you're making in the lives of uh, so many people. It is now always nice to see the way the curling club and at the Fredericton Curling Club and curlers throughout New Brunswick have come and rallied around this and hopefully curlers across the country too. But um, amazing how you've taken this and turned it into such a positive and trying to help other people. Mm. 
So thank you. Yeah, thank you, Stephen. Well, thank you for having me on. I, I've uh, unfortunately haven't been able to watch a whole lot of the trials. I'm, I'm hoping to catch a little bit of it tonight. It's uh, we've been so busy trying to get this to the next number that uh, I haven't really had a chance to watch a lot of curling, but I'm hoping to. Well, Stephen, uh, Colleen, and I will keep you updated. Up to date. Right? Just right follow right on here. Twitter. Just, just or follow actually, you can watch this on YouTube. On <laughs> absolutely. Uh, but Stephen, we're just so grateful for you being here and for yeah. the work you're doing. Um, mm. And absolutely, keep us posted yeah. on on that tally uh, and all the great work you're doing. You're always welcome to come on that curling show, and we appreciate you so much. Well, hopefully, the next time I see you, we'll be able to tell you that we rose, raised $400,000. And, and again, I thank all the volunteers that have helped us and uh, the many, many people in the curling uh, community because it is a fantastic community. Outstanding. Uh, thanks yeah. for being here, Stephen. Thank All you. our best. And uh, like like we said, stay right here on that curling show. We got you covered. Mm -hmm. you have a good evening and enjoy the curling. Thanks, guys. And I hope that's ratified the Guinness Book because you have to send it to the Guinness Book of World Records. To, but that is a lot of rock throwing and a lot of days. And I want to know cause. what the final score was. <laughs> <laughs> what a cause, too. Always about the final score. Aren't Always you? about that's the final score. You could have been there live tweeting it. All right. <laughs> we know that uh, Jennifer Jones has a night off and we want to get her on the show because uh, she is right there near the leaderboard. And I love this story because I remember so clearly in Sochi and the joy. And where is she? Jen, she's in, where she's are you? Where she's are going you? I'm, I'm not driving. I'm a passenger in the car. Sorry, we're not quite back, but uh, I didn't want to be late. So here I am. Hello to the gang. Yes, hello, hello to the gang. To, hello to Team Jones. Uh, Jennifer, uh, let us know uh, you're now five and one. How are you feeling? How is the team feeling? We're just having so much fun. Like it's been a blast out there. The crowd's been phenomenal. And um, I just, yeah, I really enjoy playing with the girls. We're just trying to enjoy the atmosphere and make as many shots as we can. And we're getting some results it wasn't probably our best game this afternoon but we found a way to win and now we're just going to try to gear up and hopefully um, enjoy a night off tomorrow night we have our bye tomorrow so we just have the one game and i think it'll be nice to have that rest what about that barn burner last night everybody was talking about that on twitter <laughs> the wild west battle between you and carrie um what was it like to be involved in that game even though it was it didn't wind up the way you wanted it to how fun was that like for the crowd i bet you everybody wrote us off and uh it was it, i was really proud of us for hanging in there and trying to make some shots and see what happens and you know it, at the end of the day we we had an opportunity to to maybe force an extra and unfortunately i just went a little bit too far but it was a lot it's like i said we're just having so much fun playing really enjoying the crowd the ice the atmosphere and uh and it's that's really what sport and curling is all about it's just uh we've had tons of laughs and you know we're finding ourselves in a good spot uh jen over the last what 18 to 20 months you and i've had a lot of conversations we had brad jacobs on the show to begin and he talked about the perspective and the love and the passion and being reminded about why you do this i think you've spoke uh, so passionately this week about finding your love and your spark and be reminded maybe you can share to our viewers tonight just about what it's like to be back on the ice under the bright lights with the big crowds yeah i, I never doubted my love of curling like it's it's always been my happy place it feels so amazing to be on the ice and especially with my teammates it's it's where i get a lot of joy in life uh, but when it was taken away it almost reminds you how much you do love it and i loved it even more i think than i even thought i did which i didn't think was possible so it, perspective, I think all of us have gained perspective over the last 18 months about all the little things in life that we may have taken for granted. And I don't think that's a bad thing. So there are some positive things that have come out of COVID. And then to kind of come here and really not sure what we were going to expect from a crowd because still COVID and how many people were going to be willing to come to the arena. And the crowds have been phenomenal and so excitable and cheering and the energy in there. It's we're super grateful. It's a privilege to play here. And I just don't want the week to ever end. Can we have it go on for a long time? <laughs> yeah. 
all the way to Sunday. All gratitude, the way to Sunday. Gratitude and joy. This is your fifth rodeo for the Olympic trials. And of course, you've won it once. Tell us about the roller coaster of the rodeo and how you ride it out. It's very similar to other events. Like you just, you really just want to try to get better as the week goes on and rebound from a loss, which we did with a win. I think that's really big in an event like this. And and at the end of the day, all you want to do is find yourself playing on the weekend and whatever that means. And so far, we, we put ourselves in a decent position for that. So the rodeo has been kind of fun. I mean, sport is all about being on a roller coaster and adrenaline rushes, and that's what makes it fun. But, uh, you know, we're, we're plugging along and just kind of enjoying it. Awesome. Uh, Jen, I, you're in the car with the team. Can you give us, can you get, this is as close as we're, we're going to get a front row seat. To, we love this front row seat. We, we love this feel front like row seat. feel like we're in the car with you guys. Uh, well, can you I, let us know what the team does in between games and a little bit of that perspective? Sure. I'm actually just with Lisa and Victor. The other girls are in our other car. Um, but yeah, between games, we've, we've just, we love hanging out. We've had some laughs, played some games. Watch a little bit of curling. It's it's not super glamorous. We have a lot of naps and basically eat and sleep. And But we really enjoy each other's company. And I think that's been a key to our success is trying to bring out each other, know that we have each other's support no matter what. And um, we're really good friends on and off the ice and really try to support each other in every way we can. And so it's kind of easy to be around these girls. I have to say I'm very lucky. Very, very lucky. Hmm. Yeah, and naps, have, nap sounds like like princess living. It sounds like what the queen of curling should do. Nap. Napping is napping it. is amazing, and I don't get I don't get to nap in normal life. So this it's pretty fun, and I have to say that Lisa and right. Victor, like they have been at every game, watching the ice, matching rocks. Like we just have a phenomenal team. Like it, I can't I can't thank my team enough for just making this just truly an incredible event. Whether we win or lose, I'm really proud of what we've done here. Well, Jed, it's always a pleasure to yeah. watch you uh, on the big stage because you can really tell how much you love this and how much you just, that, yeah. that fire. We, fire. Colleen fire. and I have been talking the about there. the spark in your eyes. Ooh, so that broom goes up. Awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. Anyhow, have a nice night. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Have a good week. Okay. Always appreciate you being on the show, Jen. Uh, we have talked about it, haven't we? Uh, all that winning, she's won everything you can yeah. possibly win in curling. Still mm. out here, still wants it just as badly. That's right. Colleen. It's amazing. It's wonderful. It's uh, and and she's such a great ambassador for the sport as well. She's so um, she's just so strong as, as pushing the game forward. Always out there in a real positive way. Um, I don't know that you could have a better ambassador for the sport. Is also a champion. Um, taking the time to right. talk to us and all this sort of stuff. I it's love that you talked about ambassador because she's yeah. always felt a greater calling. I think a lot of these curlers feel like there's a greater calling, especially because they know the young curlers are watching, the juniors yeah. are watching. We've been talking to some of the curlers about what advice they have for the juniors. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little bit of a Newfoundland and Labrador uh, theme today. So we're going to bring back Brad and Mark. We asked them earlier today at the arena what advice they have for the juniors. Here's what they had to say. My only advice is just practice hard, you know, uh, enjoy it, get down there with a friend, like that's that's how you get good is practice, but if you don't love the practice, then you're never going to get to this level. And, uh, I think everybody here loves going out and throwing rocks on their own or with the team, and, and if you love doing that, you're eventually going to get better. You know, you're, you're going to be playing with, again, with and against these guys for the you know, rest of your life, really. We've been knocking heads with Mike McEwen and Mark Kennedy and Brad Jacobs, you know, all through juniors and up now. Uh, all the way through so you know you make some great friendships uh you have some great battles and you know you, you just make great friends uh through this whole thing enjoy it uh play as hard as you can with the team with the team you have and uh you know sometimes you play really well and lose sometimes you don't play so well and you win it's uh it's a funny game Sometimes you play really well and lose, mm -hmm. and sometimes you win. We've heard that a lot this week, too, when people right. are sort of, they come off and they go, well, we played well. And, you know, we saw those stats at the beginning of the show on the whiteboard, right. and everybody is like 92%. 
91, 90, 89. Like, right. that's not any difference for teams to be playing, skips to be playing that high. You and know, because I think we should let the, the, the viewers know that sometimes you and I, well, not sometimes, all the time, we're gabbing on the media bench. Mm -hmm. And we talked about, you know, does a game at this level come down to just one shot? Yeah. And in those really elite games. Sometimes, sometimes it's, it's some more than one shot. Sure. <laughs> Or a sweeping air or what have a you. A sweeping air, absolutely. We've seen that this week. We have. Yeah. But, and a lot of that's just getting used to the ice surface and knowing, okay, this is where we have to be on At this it. point, you better know the ice. Well, let's. they papered the rocks on uh, Monday, Monday yeah. so that changes the water on the beans. All right, we're really excited about the new... Um, the jerseys, the, jerseys the uniforms, be wearing. because this is what it's all about. Getting the opportunity to wear the maple leaf on the grandest athletic stage. Yeah, it is. But they've taken the curling jersey that yes. they'll be wearing at the Olympics right. to a beautiful level. Yeah. And we're so lucky to have the artist with us. I think he got home from his course. Absolutely. He was teaching a course and so wonderful to have Patrick Hunter on the show, uh, out of the classroom and onto the show. And Patrick, you should just be so proud of what has come of this uniform. Welcome to the show. Walk us through how you came up with this incredible design. Of course, the Indigenous inspiration. Take it away. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my cheeks feel like they're ready to explode. It was a digital class, our virtual class, so I didn't have to go far. I just had to click onto you guys. But um, it was, it's, it still doesn't really feel real that I've, I've created something for, uh, you know, the Olympic stage. But um, I'm, I'm going through the motions of it. Like it's, it's insane, and and I'm still just flabbergasted that, um, you know, Indigenous culture is going to be put on on such a global stage um such as the olympics and it, it's it's such a big honor and i just really hope that a lot of indigenous people not just in my country but um you know around the world are like you know you can see yourselves in in the, on that stage as well it's not like i come from a lot of privilege or anything i'm from the bush but um we i was able to do it and and you know it, the work has been resonating with with people all over canada which feels pretty good How did the opportunity come about? And when you got that phone call about getting it on that grand stage of the Olympics, um, yeah, what was that like? Well, uh, I, it was told to me like early on in high school that, you know, be nice to everyone that you know. And it, it came from um, a friend of mine from high school. She's she's dating a, a great guy. And, and he wanted to have a talk with me about, you know, maybe collaborating on the jerseys. And we were able to that's kind of how it started, like, believe it or not. But um, yeah, we we just had some some chats early on and I discovered and, and same with him that we both had a lot of integrity and wanted to tell kind of the same story of, you know, indigeneity on the world stage uh, needs to happen because that's how reconciliation really works. Is like, if, if, you know, people can be triggered by artwork to ask questions about indigenous cultures, then the work is done. Absolutely. And isn't that it? Of course, uh, you talked about uh, the Truth and uh, Reconciliation Call to Action number 83. Of course, that's all about artist collaboration. You and Kevin Hurry collaborating, putting this all together. Patrick, can you tell us a little bit more about the inspiration mm. and the design and what you were drawing upon when you created this? Well, I he created the, you know, the look of, of the jersey without kind of like a lot more of the organic designs like the the trees and and the maple leaf and and things like that um and then i just he created a lot of beautiful spaces where i could put my artwork into um which is kind of where you see like on the torso like the, the feathers and the trees and then on along the arm you really see like the um the four medicines from my culture as well and yeah i it, i i wanted to show people that um you know, just to tell, again, like I was saying earlier, a little bit more stories and, you know, the, the four medicines that are like arranged in, this, in a braid alongside the arm, um, it's it's the traditional four medicines of the Anishinaabe, like tobacco, cedar, sweetgrass, 
and Sage. And just to give, you know, our our athletes like a little bit more of like good vibes that that was the plan there and then the seven mm -hmm. shirts the seven uh sorry uh trees along the the torso are, represent the four the seven grandfather teachings and the four feathers on the side are, are the four players that play the game so um it, it all kind of worked out to uh make a, a cool jersey how will you sorry about that how will you feel when they're at the Olympics and that first rock is thrown, or if there are Canada's on the podium for curling and you see that Jersey, how do you think that's going to make you feel? Uh, so I've had to keep this a secret for like four months and I'm not a good secret keeper. So um, I'm glad that it's finally out there. And I, like when, when we find out who actually gets to go to the Olympics, I think it's going to be even more a thrill, but um when I see it on the on the stage, and I'm, I'm such a person that doesn't believe that really good things are happening until they actually happen, um, my che my cheeks feel like they're about to explode just from smiling so hard. So I think <laughs> even like when this happens, it's going to be I don't know I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to need Botox in the cheeks just to calm them down. <laughs> so uh, Patrick, I tell you, the the response on social media, for what we're hearing here in Saskatoon at the Olympic trials. Beautiful uh, design. Beautiful. Absolutely yeah. beautiful. Thanks. You, you nailed be it. So proud. You nailed it. Yeah. And I love I that you trying. talked about those good vibes and the four mean. medicines because mm -hmm. we all need that. that. We all need that. And that's important. <laughs> and I believe those Canadian curlers are going to be better because of it. Yeah. and But we yeah. really need it. Anyhow, thank you for making time for us, Patrick. No problem. We know you were busy today, but we so appreciate hearing the whole story. Outstanding. No problem. Yeah. Anytime. Call me. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, I love what he said about that. I love the good mm. vibes. You and I talk about that. We talk about that a lot. Yeah, we all need that on our, our to, to be aware of it. You look at something like that and you think of it. You have that moment of peace, of feeling a little stronger and recognizing you can do it. And because, it's because, and of course, we're going to be back tomorrow mm. and Friday and Saturday mm -hmm. and Sunday. Is this thing... <laughs> This is our final land. Is our final we need land. to do, we, You and I have done a bad job remembering, you know, the fourth game when we're trying to remember when we're doing our little morning right. coffee walks and talking about. And the fourth game is uh, who is well, that? Well, come fourth? on. I mean, so, there's nine hours of curling there is a nine day, hours. and there are four games across a sheet. So Let's here talk we go. About uh, we're about 20 minutes away from more curling here okay. in Saskatoon on your whiteboard, Colleen. Watcher defending Briar Champ at one and four against Owen five Dunstone. Who saw that coming? No one saw that coming. That Botcher would be a little like Rachel um, down at the bottom of the, uh, towards the bottom. Yeah, McEwen three and one, Cooey three this and is a one. Big one. Whoa. That is a big one. Yeah, we better get to the rink. I know. <laughs> and Morgan one and three, Epping two and two. You gotta believe that, well, they both need to win this game. They do, they? and Epping's just quite, he's had a rough start to this season, and he's brought Glenn Howard on board, and um, they lost a tough game the other night to Gushu. They're they're playing so much better here right. than what the rest of the earlier season shows, so who right. knows? Two and two still very much alive. Gunlickson at one and three against Gushu, five and oh. It's hard to see anybody stopping Gushu. Gushu. What I love at this time of the year, or yeah. the or the spiel right sometimes the teams that are out of it are playing with less pressure nothing to lose right. versus a team that's got a lot on the line however Brad it's Gushu, Gushu. it's brad gushu and he's he a machine looks right now really dialed he's in very i think they're focused. what are they up to winning i believe 19 out of the 20 curling games yeah they've played this i liked year. remember when we were talking to him the other day after his game and he talked about the fact that his mind is working well, like it's slowing down. He's able to think well. Right. And in curling, sometimes because we everybody knows how to throw the rock well. Right. Sometimes in a certain situation that's complicated, you might get eight different ideas on how to play it. Yeah. And so it's nice when it's 
you're calm. You're you know what I love? And you know what I love? I love that we're in a curling rink. They're going to kick us out because they're literally about to pebble the sheet right beside us. You're probably oh, going to get a fresh spray of I'm pebble ready for that. as they get ready for the night draw here at the Granite yeah. Curling Club as we get a rinkside view. Take a look at this. Mm -hmm. Outstanding. You see the teams getting ready in the warm room. Try to spray so me. this is a curling confluence mm -hmm. in Saskatoon. As the juniors get ready to take to the ice, we'll have more for you tomorrow on that curling show. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, producer Soph. Thanks, Soph. so much fun. Thank you to the fans.